Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to this beautiful, beautiful series we have this year. It is known as supplications from revelation. Every one of us makes dua. We call out to Allah. We need to know how to call out to Allah. We want our duas to be accepted. And we are looking at those duas mentioned in revelation. Revelation includes the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala abdillahi wa rasulihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We pray Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his household, companions, and every one of us. May Allah bless us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, episode number two, we ended by making mention of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that they called out to Allah in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat. Let me recite this beautiful verse. Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat wa yad'oonana raghaban wa rahaba wa kanu lana khashi'een. Indeed, they used to make haste. They used to make haste in doing good deeds. They used to compete when it comes to doing good deeds. And they used to call out to us with two qualities. For indeed, they were the ones who were humble. They were filled with humility. They were obedient. What are these two qualities? Raghaban wa rahaban. They had hope when they called out to Allah that Allah would answer them. And they were fearful as well of the wrath of Allah, the punishment of Allah, anything negative. So it's amazing. When I'm in need, I have a fear. A fear of what? A fear that there is something I want and I need. How do I get it? There are so many ways of doing it. Allah has given me a capacity. I may go out to look for the job. I don't know if the job is going to be good for me. I don't know if what I want is going to be good for me. Say, for example, those who are sick and ill, may Allah grant them cure. If you're looking for cure, you're going to go to this doctor. You might want to go to another for a second opinion. But in the interim, through, through that fear, when you call out to Allah, it brings within you a hope. It brings within you a hope, hope in the mercy of Allah. I know of so many people whom the doctors have written off that you have so much to live and that's it, limited amount of time and they're still living. I know of plenty. Who was that? That was Allah. That was Allah, the maker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. So this dua, uh, this description of the way the messengers used to call out is important because I need to learn from it. When Allah says, Those are the ones who are rightly guided. So with their guidance, you should follow and you should make sure that you are following that guidance of the messengers. Subhanallah. So when they called out to Allah, what did they do? They called out to Allah having hope in the mercy of Allah, knowing that Allah is going to respond. And at the same time, they had fear. They had a sense of consciousness of Allah, knowing that if Allah doesn't help, who's going to help? So when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should definitely be from among those who uh, understand this. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a few of these duas of the prophets of Allah. They sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't it strange? Isn't it amazing? You have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam flawless. No sense. Nothing against his name that is negative. And he's seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And he's calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely those of us who are his followers need to make sure we've taken that and we will repeat it. We will do it exactly how he did it. Subhanallah. But let's look at the previous prophets. Also Masumin, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks to us about how Adam alayhi salam called out. I already made mention of that in the previous episode. Then I want to move on to Nuh, the prophet Noah. May peace be upon him. What happened at the time of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, he asked Allah to save his son. Now, many of us have children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Ameen. And may Allah bless those who have children 
that those children would be the coolness of their eyes. Amen. Nuh alayhi salam had a son who did not want to listen to him. So when Nuh alayhi salam told him, I'm a prophet of Allah, you need to worship Allah alone, he just went away. And he decided he doesn't want, he's going to climb the mountain when the water started coming and the rains and all the water was gushing from everywhere. He decided, you know what, I'm going to climb the mountain. Nuh alayhi salam says, no, my son, come. But he didn't. So Nuh alayhi salam was saddened because obviously his son did not accept the message. So he had asked Allah to save his son, but the son was not saved. Later on, he realized that, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. Now, we wouldn't even consider this a sin or something we need to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Take a look at the high level of these prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their status was so high that what we don't even consider something you need to seek forgiveness for, they sought forgiveness for that. So Nuh alayhi salam says, Rabbi inni a'udhu bika an as'alaka ma laysa li bihi ilm. Amazing verse. This verse is in Surah Hud. Verse number 47, Nuh alayhi salam is saying, Oh my Rabb, oh my Rabb, I am seeking protection in you from having asked you that which I don't have knowledge. Wow. We don't even consider that a sin. You know, I asked Allah, Allah didn't give me. Okay, so Allahu Akbar, may Allah not do that to us, but I'm just giving you an example. Nuh alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, save my son. And the son was not saved. And he said, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from having asked you something that I don't have knowledge about. Allahu Akbar. Wa illa taghfir li wa tarhamni akum min al khasirin. If you don't forgive me and you don't have mercy on me, I'm going to be from those who are the losers. I'm going to be from the losers. My brothers and sisters, do you notice the similarity between Adam alayhi salam's dua and Nuh alayhi salam's dua? They were not too far off. Apparently, according to the narrations, there were only 10 generations of people between Nuh and Adam alayhi salam. He's calling out, saying the same thing. Oh Allah, if you don't forgive me, you don't have mercy on me, I'm going to be from amongst the losers. In that case, they said, uh, if, you don't have, if you don't forgive us and if you don't have mercy on us, we will be from among the losers. Who was that? Adam and Eve. Hawa alayhim as salam. And here it is Nuh. How many of us, when we call out to Allah, we say, Oh Allah, forgive me. If you don't forgive me, and if you don't have mercy upon me, I'm going to be from the losers. Allahu Akbar. Don't you think we should add that in our du'as? Oh Allah, if you don't have mercy on me, if you don't forgive me, I'm going to be from the losers. Look, Adam alayhi salam said exactly the same thing. Nuh alayhi salam for something else totally is saying the same thing. I'm going to be from among the losers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, responded to him in such a beautiful way. I want to move on to another dua, a dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You and I know Ibrahim alayhi salam had a special relationship with Allah. Allah tested him so much, one after the other. He kept on calling out to Allah. With us, we have tests that Allah places in our lives, one after the other, five, six, and we become despondent. We want to lose faith. We want to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. But go back and look at those who are better than you, better than I. They had more hope and they suffered much more than you and I. Ibrahim alayhi salam, one after the other. So many things happened. I want to actually concentrate on the supplication. He says, Surat Ibrahim, the whole chapter is named after him. He says, oh Allah, forgive me, my parents and all the believers on the day that you will take the accounts, the day of reckoning. What do I learn from this? Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made dua for his parents. This was prior to the prohibition of making dua for those who've passed away on disbelief for their mercy. But besides that, his concern was not about himself alone. How many of us, when we call out to Allah, we're just worried about ourselves. Oh Allah, give me, give me, give me. I want, I'll have, I want, or my children. And that's it. It stops at your children. Make dua for yourself. Yes, your family members, definitely. Broaden it, the community. Not only that, all those to come, those who have passed. What does it cost you to include them? Oh Allah, have mercy on every one of us. Ameen. 
What does it cost you to include them? Why become stingy, miserly, niggardly? When it comes to dua, it's not something material. You're losing nothing. In fact, you're gaining. Because when you pray for others, the angels are praying for you. So here, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Oh my Rabb. Notice he's using also the term Rabb. Rabbana. There's Rabbi we spoke about. Here is Rabbana. Rabbana ghfir li. Wali. Oh Allah, forgive me my parents, my family members, and the mu'mineen, the day of reckoning. So his mind has gone far, his belief has gone far. He believes that there is a day of reckoning. Indeed, it's manifest from his dua. And he's gone so far that Allah forgive all of us. He didn't say, those I got along with, forgive them. Those I didn't get along with, punish them, etc. No, you need to be broad. You need to have a good heart. You need to open that heart. Oh Allah, forgive us. Subhanallah. Uh, this is a beautiful dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then uh, there is another dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam where he says, وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَن يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ He says, and he is the one, he was describing Allah, he is the one whom I have hoped that he will forgive my sins on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. He is the one whom I have hope he will forgive my sins on the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, learn to have hope in the mercy of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter what you've done, no matter what you are trying to achieve, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah will never leave you for as long as you do not leave Allah. If you leave Allah, you'll be a goner. Subhanallah. Nasullah fanasiyahum. The Quran says they forgot Allah, so then Allah left them. But for as long as you have Allah flickering in your heart, Allah is with you. Never lose hope. Don't allow the devil to come to you to make you think that you know what? There is no mercy of Allah for me. There will always be mercy of Allah. Even upon your deathbed, the best thing you could have is hope in the mercy of Allah. Hope that the hereafter is going to be better than this life. Many people ill and sick on their deathbeds and people don't know what to tell them. Remind them of their good deeds. Remind them of the mercy of Allah. Remind them of the beauty of Jannah and tell them you are definitely going to Jannatul Firdaus by the will of Allah. If you had Iman and you tried and you believed in Allah, well, there is good waiting for you. It can never be bad for a mu'min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he was going through the the uh, instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always called out to Allah. It was not enough for him to just do what Allah wanted and then carry on. No, he always said, Oh Allah, accept it from us. Oh Allah, forgive us. Let's take a look at the example in Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Show us show us our acts of worship and forgive us for indeed you are the most forgiving the most merciful we learn a lot from this dua of ibrahim alayhi salam dua meaning supplication we learn a lot from it he says oh allah show us our acts of worship show us how you want to be worshiped he didn't just do whatever he wanted and said right allah will take it because you know what my heart is sincere he actually said, Oh Allah, guide us, show us how you want to be worshipped. Arina manasikana. Then he says, Tuba alayna and forgive us. We're going to try our best to fulfill what you've asked us to fulfill in the best possible way. And we want you to forgive our shortcomings. We want you to forgive that which we know, the sins we've committed, and even the shortfall in the worship that we are supposed to be fulfilling for your sake. So, Oh Allah, forgive us. Tuba alayna. Why? You are the one who is most forgiving, most merciful. Tawab is a name of Allah that refers to the one who constantly forgives one after the other. Didn't I tell you, you did one thing, you did two things, three things, five things, ten things. Keep on seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Repeat it. Repetition helps you. When you have a dua you want to make, keep repeating the dua. I remember a time when I made a dua and I kept repeating this dua that some people considered impossible. And I repeated it so so much and so often, morning, afternoon, evening and night, one dua, together with praising Allah and all other things. And a time came some years later when I was given that, subhanallah, in a miraculous way. I'm talking of myself. I'm sure there are so many of us who have similar examples. 
But the best examples are those of the prophets of Allah. Here, they always had hope. Oh Allah, you are the most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. I'm showing you the verses of the Quran, supplications, the seeking of forgiveness of the prophets of Allah, yet they did not need it. Look at Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Once he had punched someone, Allah took that person's life away, right? But as a result, he felt it and he was so, so remorseful and immediately he felt the regret. Within a split moment, he said, Dhalam tu nafsi. Oh Allah, I've wronged myself. Notice the same word used by Adam alayhi salam. Dhalam tu nafsi. They said, Dhalam na anfusana. How many of us say, Oh Allah, I've wronged myself? Oh Allah, I have wronged myself. Qala Rabbi inni dhalam tu nafsi faghfirni. Oh Allah. This is Ad, uh, Musa alayhi salam saying, Oh Allah, oh my Rabb. I have wronged myself, so forgive me. Just that one word, فغفرلي, so forgive me. So Allah says, فغفرله, so he forgave him. He asked Allah's forgiveness sincerely with remorse, repentance, and Allah says, we forgave him. What did it require of him in terms of words? Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli. Oh my Rabb, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. Allah says, فغفرله. So Allah forgave him. Wow. As simple as that. And we are busy sitting here losing hope to say, oh, you know, I think I've done too much. And I think it's, you know, Allah won't forgive me. I've come across so many people who keep saying this. It's dangerous. No, be determined. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. But you need to believe that you've wronged yourself. Because when you commit a sin, you're not harming Allah. You're not taking anything away from uh, the, the kingdom of Allah. But rather you are harming yourself. So seek the forgiveness of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And you know what? In that verse, the verse of Surah uh, Al-Qasas, verse number 16, Allah says, Innahu huwa al rahim Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. You see, Tawwab is also uh, the one who forgives often. Tawwab. Tawwab is actually the one who accepts the return of those who are returning to him. And Ghafoor is the one who forgives. Subhanallah. So there is a, the difference between the two is, is something interesting. One is when you return to Allah, you've changed your ways, your habits. You, you know that everything has changed. I'm Tawwab. I've come back to Allah. Ta'ib. I've returned to Allah. It's as good as you've not committing any sin before. Muhammad says the one who sought forgiveness from sin is equivalent to he who did not commit sin at all. Subhanallah. Why? Because you changed your life. Ghafoor here is referring to Allah forgiving and Allah keeps forgiving. And that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Innahu huwa al rahim. Then when Musa alayhi salam was entering uh, when he was tasked to go to the Pharaoh and he's going to Fir'aun, he says, Oh, our Rabb, forgive me. Oh, my Rabb, forgive me and my brother. Oh, my Rabb, forgive me and my brother and enter us into your mercy. We want you to shower upon us your mercy. We want to have taste and feel the mercy of yours, O oh Allah. Rabbi ghfirli wa li akhi wa anta arhamur rahimeen. That is in Surah Al-A'raf, uh, verse number 140, in fact, verse number 151. So my brothers and sisters, here again, mention is made of the qualities of Allah. Some of the qualities of Allah, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you want to seek the forgiveness of Allah, declare His praise. Make sure you know the names of Allah. A few of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you use them. Look, he's saying, we want your mercy. You are the owner of mercy. That's why we say when you want cure, you say, Allahumma shfi, ya shafi. Oh Allah, cure us. You are the owner of cure. Oh, ya shafi ishfini. Oh, owner of cure, cure me. Ya razzaq urzuqni. Oh, owner of sustenance, grant me sustenance. So you are actually declaring that Allah is the owner of what you are asking for. No association of partnership. When we're calling out to Allah, we're calling out to Allah alone. That's the secret of Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha teaches this to us. And all the prophets have done exactly the same. 
they say you are the one you are the owner of mercy you are the owner of forgiveness you are the most merciful if you don't have mercy on us we are the one who are going who we are the ones who are going to lose so this is also a very very uh, a good dua that we learn from Musa alayhi salatu was salam uh, another uh, dua is the dua of Sulaiman there are more duas of uh, Musa alayhi salam but we want to move inshallah the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam uh, he made such a powerful dua Allah tested him one after the other and this dua that he made he was granted Imagine the type of love Allah have, has had for his messengers. May Allah love us with similar love. Say Ameen. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam says, and this verse is in Surah Sad, verse number 35. He says, Oh my Rabb, forgive me and grant me kingdom that no one after me would have. For indeed, you are the granter. You are the one who gives gifts. Wahhab, a hibah is a gift and Wahhab is the one who, give gifts, who gives gifts. If you want a gift of Allah, you seek from Allah and you call him Al-Wahhab. Ya Wahhab, Habli. Normally when we're asking for children, the term used is Habli. You know, grant me Al-Wahhab. Ya Wahhab, Habli, Dhurriyatan, Tayyibatan. We're going to come to that dua, inshallah, when we speak about Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. Here, we're speaking about Sulaiman alayhi salam saying, Oh Allah, forgive me and grant me. I think it's important for us to know that without that forgiveness, don't expect to have from Allah something. We seek Allah's forgiveness. We're on the same page as I've been saying. And then we say, Oh Allah, grant me this, grant me that, grant me what I want for indeed. You're the owner of this, you're the owner of that, you're the owner of absolutely everything. That's the mercy of Allah. So when we look at Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam's dua, and we see he was given everything, kingdom, such that the jinn were under his instruction, the wind under his instruction, the clouds under his instruction, the ants, he could communicate with them, he instructed them, the birds, the insects, everything, everything he was granted. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was given more than Sulaiman alayhi salam, but from a different angle. Sulaiman alayhi salam was given something unique, subhanallah. But even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says, and this makes me cry every time I think about it. He says, Inni la a'rifu hajaran bi Makkata kana yusallimu alayhi. He says, Wallahi, I know a stone in Makkah that used to greet me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Imagine, the stones recognize that this is the Nabi of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of us, we couldn't even care. A'udhu billah. He was the best of creation. The stone recognized him, greeted him. And he says, Wallahi, I know a stone that used to greet me in Mecca, a rock that greeted me in Mecca. Subhanallah. So he also communicated with all these things, just like Sulaiman alayhi salam did. But he was favored way beyond Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam in different ways, in ways that Sulaiman alayhi salam did not see. But this was the dua. Uh, when it comes to Dawood alayhi salam, who was the father of Sulaiman alayhi salam, we will see his dua inshallah in the next episode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. I'm really enjoying this beautiful, beautiful season of Ramadan. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with more of these beautiful supplications. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa alaykum wa rahmatullah.